Hey everyone, Flint Truth Channel. Hope everyone's doing well. It's Wednesday, January 25th, 2023 at approximately 1 o'clock, 12.55 p.m. Um, so I want to take you guys back to 1999, December 31st, New Year's Eve. Some of you are probably aware of what I'm going to go into this and, you know, are very well of the story and you probably have done some research into it. Others have not, but... Um, during the Y2K scare of 1999, there was something else that happened that was a major, major event that really was not, hasn't been talked about in a long time. It hasn't really been, as far as I know, exposed by any YouTuber, but this is the George Harrison stabbing where he was supposedly stabbed in the chest by a burglar. The guy was 33 years old. Of course, the Freemasonic, um, code hoax number it happened at 3.30 in the morning. Of course, there's your 33 again. And there's so many videos of where people explain, you know, what 33 means to Freemasonry, you know, without having to go into a great big detail and explain to everybody what it means, the, signif the significance of the number three, the trinity, and just the whole thing. So go look that up if you're not familiar with Order Out of Chaos, the number 33 in Freemasonry. It's their hoax code. It's the number that they use to let the initiated know that they're behind this um, event that's taken place and that they're the ones who's controlling it. They're the mastermind. And to basically, you know, like I said, let the initiated know, hey, this is not a real story. This is contrived. It is staged. It's fake. It's for public reaction. It's for public consumption. It's not the truth. And they code it with the number 33. And like I said, this this story, just like you know all, all the other ones, is full of red flags. It's Swiss cheese, nothing but holes all the way through it. And we're gonna get to the bottom of uh, of some of it. You know, I'm not gonna make this a very long video, going through all the details, showing you all the numerology, and showing you all the things that connect with this. But you can just go back to look at the Mark David Chapman with the whole John Lennon incident that happened in uh, what was that? Uh, 1980, I want to say, like December 5th, 1980, uh, I think that was when it happened. Uh, excuse me, December 8th, actually, if I would have just read down this article, it says it. December 8th, 1980, um, supposedly John Lennon was murdered. Now, I don't personally believe that story at all. You guys can believe it. I choose not to believe that. I do not believe that John Lennon really died. I believe that the elite loved their puppets. They loved their... Um, they're little puppets. They make these little so-called public heroes and they have the world fall in love with him. And then, you know, the whole world puts their faith in, hey, you know, John Lennon can help us. John Lennon can, can you know, bring, you know, bring this truth out or, you know, or, or help get the world back to how it's supposed to be or whatever their hopes and desires are. That's, um, a big, big part of it. But like I said, I don't believe it personally. I don't believe that John Lennon was killed on that day. I believe that it was uh, contrived, that it was made for mass public hysteria. Um, and I don't believe it was true. There's actually a video supposedly where Paul, um, I think it's called Paul McCartney really is dead. The last will, the last testament of George Harrison, I think it's, I believe it's called. And supposedly it's a video about how the Beatles, how Paul McCartney really died in 1966 and the Beatles coded their work through symbology and other other ways other things you know album covers and stuff like that and you could find the secrets if you're um have a keen eye and, and, and you look into things and the video is kind of satire it's you know there's some truth i'm sure mixed into it mixed with a lot of lies and mixed with you know it, it's a story that they're trying to sell you and is it true did, did he really die in 1966 who knows okay but i do know that all these things are pre-planned Okay, these public little hoaxes, these are pre-planned long in advance. These events are pre-planned long in advance. They're not going to just take the risk. But we're going to talk about John Lennon. Or excuse me, we're going to talk about George Harrison, supposedly at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, his house, his estate was broken into uh, with his wife, him, Danny, his son, Danny. And supposedly, his you know, this guy scaled this his estate like Spider-Man. Uh, carrying a statue of St. Michael that his wife made, smashed through the window um, when he got to the top. 
I guess it didn't alert any of the security guards. They didn't hear the glass break in. They didn't see nothing on camera. They didn't have no motion detectors, no radar, um, you know, no type of nothing. And no no bodyguards, no security, no nothing for them to, to catch this guy, to hear anything, nothing. He made it all the way into George Harrison's house, made it all the way upstairs, into his room, started stabbing the beetle. Now, if you guys believe that, then you guys will believe anything. And this is when they know that they, that they, that they got you, that they hoodwinked you is when you start believing these crazy, unbelievable fairy tales. And it's very easy for them to sell stuff like this to the public. So let's read it. George Harrison nearly faced a similar fate while asleep in his home on Friar Park Estate near Henley on Thames, Oxfordshire. Excuse me, Oxfordshire. Harrison was attacked at 3.30 a.m. There's that 33 coax uh, code again. Hoax code again, excuse me. And if you guys go look in, there's all kinds of like, seances and evil things that like they try to get people to do kids to do um at three o'clock three thirty in the morning you know artists will talk about how you know they're demonically possessed and you know a, a ghost comes in there really a demon aka a demon comes in them and, and and ghost writes a song for them or there's just so many rituals and so much witchcraft and and, and things behind 330 and 3 um that you know should be another another red flag for you guys the perpetrator scaled the estate walls yeah like spider-man i guess uh evade, just like the guy in the donald trump building right yeah right all these things are public things that are made to happen because they love the reaction they know the public is going to eat it up they're going to talk about it they get off on the energy the vibrations and energy is what always what you talk what you hear about these occultists talk about um the perpetrator scaled the state walls evading security and broke through and broke in through a window using a wing of the statue of saint michael uh, that george harrison's wife made george harrison proceeded to intercept the intruder and charge at him head on harrison however failed to disarm the man and suffered multiple stab wounds as a result yeah, supposedly over 40 stab wounds harrison's wife olivia struck the intruder 33 year old michael now 33 your code hoax is your code number right there at 3 30 in the morning they threw it in there again michael's 33 and 22 in numerology i mean there's just so much behind this like i said they get off on these public these public events right they, they you know and people will be like wow can you believe it it's all about fear because they you know they want you to think if somebody can break into a beetle's house they can break into your house they want you to think that anything can happen that's the whole point um olivia struck the 33 33 year old Michael Abram, a native of Liverpool with a poker. Harrison's wife recalls of the incident. I hit the guy several times and I could see the blood spreading down his blonde hair. And then he got up and chased me. He had me around the neck and George got up and jumped on his back. And poor George, you know, he said later, just when he got off me, I was thinking, oh good, now I have to go fight him. Olivia recalls the last part of the story with bittersweet fondness. While the event was tragic, it was overshadowed by the former Beatles' sense of humor and wit. See? <laughs> Give me a break. Even though George was closing in on death, he still maintained his wits. As when he, excuse me, as when he and his family were questioned by the police as to the nature of his crime. Now, how many people do you know that get stabbed 40 times and, and live? <laughs> um, it wasn't a burglar. It was certainly... And he certainly wasn't auditioning for the traveling Wilburys. Fortunately, George Harrison did not die as a result of his injuries and was treated at a hospital for a punctured lung. After an investigation took place, it was determined that this was not merely a coincidental coincidental burglary gone wrong, but had been but a planned attack on Harrison. Yeah, this was all a fake contrived fake attack. Okay, nothing ever happened to him. Mark Abram, not unlike or excuse me, Michael Abram, not unlike Mark Chapman's killing of John Lennon, according to the court paper reports from the legal proceedings that followed at the time, believed that the Beatles were witches who flew around on broomsticks. Subsequently, George Harrison possessed him and that he had been sent on a mission by God to kill him. He saw George as a sorcerer and a devil. These people all are sorcerers and they are all devils. That is true. But if you think that that guy wasn't a pawn, wasn't a tool of the elite, you know, wasn't controlled, then you are falling for the facade. You're falling for the for the divide and conquer you're falling for you know these fake news stories and that's what the majority of the news is it's fake it's contrived it's not real um so i just wanted to share this with you guys you can come to your own conclusions what you believe whether you believe it really happened whether you believe it didn't happen um that's all up to you guys but i will tell you i don't believe the story with john lennon i do not believe this, this story about george harrison 
and it's my personal right to not believe it. Like I said, it's full of Swiss, it's a full of holes, it's Swiss cheese, there's red flags everywhere. And I'm not just talking about the, him being 33 and it happened at 3.30 in the morning. I've done a lot of research into this. I've done a lot of um, homework and I can tell you from my belief that it's staged. You know, and people will believe whatever they want. I made a, I think it was an almost eight hour video on Kennedy assassination. And I went through all the evidence. I mean, I showed you the autopsy photos. I showed you, I mean, everything. I went through the numerology. It was a, it was one of my best live streams. It was on my last channel. They got taken down coincidence, coincidentally, of course, because it just was too much truth on there. But that was an awesome live stream. It was eight hours. And I went through absolutely every detail around the JFK assassination. And I left, in my personal opinion, no stone to be unturned. And anybody that was doubtful, they came away watching though. It was like, it maybe was even more than eight hours because there was like, it was like an eight part series. And some of them were, it probably was way more than eight hours, to be honest with you. It probably was, it was just double that. But it was very, very in depth. I thought it was very well done. And I really wish that I could get that video, those videos back because they were, like I said, it took a lot of time. It was very well done. A lot of great research was done into that, which I have all the research still. I could redo it again and make the video again, um, but it would take a long time. Most of my videos, thankfully, I had, I have saved up and uh, I had saved up and back, backed up. And this channel, I have every video saved and backed up just because I, I know better now. But um, my first channel, I wasn't as you know keen. I wasn't as aware. And so I didn't save every video, every live stream like I should have. So live and learn. But my point is, is when you do the research into these events like the JFK, the John Mark David Chapman, uh, you know, all these so-called events, these, you know, Robert uh, Kennedy getting supposedly getting killed, you know, the Sirhan, Sirhan, you just do all your research and you do all your homework, you'll come to the same conclusions as I have. That this is all staged. It's all for map mass propaganda. It's all to enslave the public and to enslave their minds and to control them and control their thoughts. And they have you when they can control what you think, when they control what you fear and all that, they have you. So just wanted to share this with you guys. Like I said, you could take it as a grain of salt or you can start doing some research, start looking into it and, and coming to your own conclusions and saying, you know what, I'm not going to buy this official story either. Uh, something doesn't add up, you know, how come everything revolves back to the number 33 with all these elites? Why does it, that number always come into play? So when you start asking these questions, you'll start coming up with some answers. So with that said, I want to thank you all. Uh, thumbs up the video if you found it useful. If you enjoy my work, I appreciate it. God bless you all, and I hope you all have a great day.